Wow. Scariest episode ever. I mean, how did Stephen Moffat go from writing this to this? Just saying. The Empty Child and the Doctor Dance, it's the first ever story to be written by Stephen Moffat and the second two-parser and episode 8 and 9 of series 1. Now, uh, The Empty Child and the Doctor Dances tells the story of the Doctor and Rosa tra tracking a uh, shuttle which inside it, uh, of course we all know Captain Jack Hartness played by John Barrowman, and they trace the shuttle back to uh, London World War II uh, during the Blitz and they discover that the shuttle uh, landed on a boy who became infected and transformed into a gas mask zombie who keeps repeating are you my mummy and whenever he touches anyone they become like him so and the, meanwhile Rose Tyler meets Captain Jack Harkness and uh, the trio bond and uh, try to uh, uh, get to the shuttle and uh, cure the gas mask zombies before it's too late. Now, this is Stephen Moffat's first story. Uh, of course, he would eventually become uh, the show's head writer after Russell T. Davis uh, stepped down in 2010. So this story is widely acclaimed. I mean, most of Stephen Moffat's writing is acclaimed, uh, particularly his writing for Doctor Who and Sherlock. Uh, this is universally considered the best story of series one and not very popular to criticise this episode at all. So, uh, that being said, uh, I can gladly agree. This story is an absolute classic. Uh, this is Stephen Moffat's, uh, in my opinion, to this day, uh, best story he has ever written for Doctor Who. I mean, uh, gosh, uh, where do I start by how uh, brilliant this story is? Uh, how masterful it is. Well, for starters, the setting for this episode is just uh, uh, beautiful. It's uh, finally we have another historical episode, uh, the first being The Unquite Dead. Uh, actually, to go back to uh, uh, World War II London during the Blitz was an ingenious idea, and uh, the production design of this episode. Uh, just uh, out of this world, uh, flawless. I mean, uh, it felt like uh, the Blitz, uh, maybe some of the CGI is a little dated now, uh, particularly the green screen backgrounds, but uh, but uh, but it was fine at the time, so that's not too much at the nitpick, and yeah, uh, props to the production team, uh, they deserve a pass on a back and an award because uh, they've uh, done everything they can uh, to make you feel like you're in World War II, not to mention this is one of the most beautifully shot episodes I have ever seen, the cinema photography here is top notch. I mean, uh, every shot is uh, dripping with atmosphere, filled with tension and uh, suspense and and it, yeah, it, it, since this is a, a horror episode, it certainly will scare the living shit out of kids and adults, uh, as it did me. Uh, it, it's uh, They got the atmosphere perfectly and and of course, uh, Christopher Eccleston and Billy Piper are, once again do not disappoint with uh, the Doctor finding Nancy, this young girl who's helping a group of children during the war, uh, who I presume have been separated from their family. So she goes out and steals food and, uh, and, uh, and the Doctor of course uh, joins them as, he's, <laughs> as he of course is curious to help them. but. But the uh, the boy with the gas mask, so who goes, are you my mummy? The empty child, as they say. Uh, he's been uh, mysteriously uh, targeting Nancy uh, because of, because Nancy reveals to the doctor that uh, he's her little he's her brother, which of course uh, we all know uh, that's not the case. We all know. There's a twist in that later on, spoiler alert, but we'll talk about that later. Nancy's a very interesting and sympathetic character. The actress did a wonderful job. You feel sorry for her uh, uh, having to uh, to break the law and steal just to keep these kids alive. Uh, you, you're you actually rooting for her because of that. And uh, 
the fact that she lost uh, her presumed brother makes you all the more sympathise with her. And it, at first uh, she wants nothing to do with the doctor, but she uh, later on uh, realises that he's the only one who can help her. And even Rose, uh, while she doesn't get as much to do as the doctor, even she gets an interesting uh, subplot where she uh, uh, goes to find uh, the empty child and she hangs on to this... Uh, a balloon uh, from the rope and just when you think she's gonna fall thankfully uh, Captain Jack Harkness this is played wonderfully by John Barrow and this was his uh, very first episode his introduction and uh, words cannot describe how great he is in the role this is John Barrowman's best role and forever will be it was such a shame that they turned him down for the 50th anniversary he 50th anniversary would have been imagine how much better it would have been if he was in it he he really flirts with Rose and, and they have a great time on on his ship on the top of Big Ben. That's that's a really sweet uh, scene and I know uh, people will hate on Rose for this scene because uh, she has uh, she already has Mickey and she's kind of betraying him here but, uh, but she doesn't really love him. Uh, she's only having a bit of fun so uh, that's not really a betrayal and but of course, uh, the parts of this episode you will want me to talk about, is it frightening? Yes, it is absolutely terrifying. Uh, I was hiding behind the sofa uh, like uh, ten times throughout this episode. Yes, it's that scary. Uh, yeah, that's back when Stephen Moffat actually scared you. His writing just isn't scary anymore. He's really lost that. That's such a shame. But, uh, but uh this is his uh, scariest work, easily. The gas mask zombies look uh, terrifying as hell, uh, particularly the empty child himself, who at first is the presumed antagonist of the episode, but of course we find out he's not, spoiler alert, but uh, uh, whenever uh, he's around, uh, you are like, uh, I'll keep uh, the fuck away from him, because if he touches you, that's it. Uh, your, your face is a gas mask, and yeah, so... There's so much tension when he's around. Uh, that's one thing Stephen Moffat's writing had uh, back in when he wasn't head writer, tension. And uh, this episode, it has an amazing cliffhanger, The Empty Childs. Uh, that's uh, such a gripping cliffhanger. You will want to see uh, the Doctor dances instantly, like uh, when uh, uh, the Doctor, Rose and Jack are trapped in the hospital and they are surrounded by the gas mask zombies. Um, and the way they resolve this cliffhanger in the Doctor Dance is, uh, is perfect. Is, it, we get a great payoff to this when the Doctor's like, Go to your room! Thank God that worked. Those would have been terrible last words. Oh, that was funny as hell. Oh, oh that was so clever. And that brilliantly intercut with a cliffhanger where uh, the empty child was about to touch Nancy, but he could hear the Doctor saying that and just walked away. Oh, that was so relieving to see that they were okay. So uh, a good portion of uh, the Doctor dances is uh, the trio uh, running through the hospital evading uh, the empty child and the gas mask zombies to find the shuttle to uh, cure them. And uh, it's called the Doctor dances because Rose says the classic line, the world doesn't end because the Doctor dances. Uh, to which uh, we get uh, an even better payoff to this line later. And Nancy sadly uh, gets questioned by the police uh, for uh, stealing, uh, to which uh, you're hoping she's going to get away, because I know, although she is breaking the law, she has good intentions. Uh, her heart's 100% uh, in the right place, caring for these poor kids. And uh, and uh, she uh, says, uh, frankly, she does manage to get away, and she says a brief goodbye to her gang before she heads to the hospital, where she knows uh, uh, the the doctor is the only one who can help her <laughs> and uh, and resolve all this. And when uh, she does get to uh, the site, uh, sadly she gets uh, 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 handcuffed to by one of the soldiers, who then becomes uh, infected by the shuttle and uh, turns into a gas mask zombie too. <laughs> And so that was a really tense scene. Uh, the, yeah, again, plenty plenty of suspense and tension here. Uh, talk about uh, a horrifying roller coaster ride on Doctor Who. Uh, Stephen Moffat, please bring this back to your uh, 
recent writings, uh, especially for series 10. And uh, when a when the gang finally do meet up, uh, uh, Rose, uh, it's a nice scene where Rose tells Nancy uh, that uh, that uh, she's a girl from the future and the Germans don't win the war, we win. Uh, that so was, a, that was a nicer scene because Nancy had practically lost hope, as many British people had, of winning against the, the Nazis at the time. And, and that was nice that Rose was there for Nancy and told her, uh, don't worry, we're going to win. And unlike saving her father, that's not breaking the laws of time or anything, so that's okay. And yet people still call her a bitch for some reason. Uh, anyway, when uh, they finally get to the shuttle and, uh, and Jack is ready to do his work and they're surrounded by the empty child and the gas mask zombies who are closing in and... The doctor realizes the truth for uh, why Nancy uh, has has uh, such a love and connection to this boy because uh, he realizes she was old enough to give birth and and she's his mother. Wow, was such a brilliant twist! I did not see that coming whatsoever. I, that changed everything. Uh, my jaw dropped to the ground, and we get this beautiful ending where Nancy goes up to uh, the boy and she. She holds him in her arms and she's like, of course I'm your mummy, I'll always be your mummy. And that's just what he lo wanted, his mother's lover, so he's not really a villain. Uh, I'm glad this episode uh, actually uh, could... It, it was great how this episode could be brilliant without any antagonist whatsoever. It didn't need it, so it, it made... The empty child was just an innocent boy who wanted his mother back, and with that... Uh, the uh, shuttle finally works and uh, the boy and the other gas mask zombies are cured and turned back to normal and the doctor gets his brilliant line and while the ninth doctor's best moments where he says just this once everybody lives oh that that that's an amazing moment it puts a smile on my face and oh and at the end where the doctor and rose enter the tardis and and they dance to the music thus the title the doctor dances are wonderful uh, heartfelt endings of the episode the Empty Child and the Doctor Dances, what can I say? It is all around brilliant. It is by far Stephen Moffat's best episode and and masterful television as well as masterful Doctor Who and one of the top five stories of series one, without question. If you have not seen it yet, get off your ass and see it. It is worth infinitely more of your time than uh, some of his shocking writing in his era, but that their reviews for another day. I give the empty child and the doctor dancers five stars out of five. Moffat, if you're listening to this, this is what happens when you uh, try. You can make a uh, compelling, uh, masterful, sto horrifying story that uh, uh, hits you here and actually makes sense. Uh, so uh, I love you guys. Thank you for watching. And what did you think of the empty child and the doctor dances? Please uh, comment and let me know. Please like this video and subscribe. Be following on Twitter and on my Google Plus, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys.